This lecture is about the math and science of wind turbines. Wind turbines currently make up a very small part of the global energy production. They share the 2% of renewables with solar power down here. So they're very small, but they're being used more and more, and they're important to understand. These are the basic facts about wind turbines. I'm going to have you copy these down, but I'm not going to list through them. You can just pause the video to take notes. These are the transformations that happen in order to make wind turbines possible. First of all, the radiant energy from the sun is transformed into thermal energy in the air. That just means light from the sun heating the air up until it begins to move. And when it begins to move, thermal energy in the air is changed into kinetic energy in the air, which can then be captured as kinetic energy in the turbine. Basically, the wind is making the turbine spin. And when the wind makes the turbine spin, it also spins a generator inside of the turbine. And just like all the other power stations that we've dealt with, that turning generator turns a magnet around a coil of wire, which is what we use to generate electricity. So this is exactly the same situation. A magnet is being spun around a wire with a generator. It's just that now it's the wind that's making it spin. These are the advantages and disadvantages of wind turbines. The advantages are that there are no greenhouse gas emissions, they're renewable, we can't run out of wind, and the wind power itself is free. We don't need to transport wind in order to get it to the turbine, it's already there. So as long as we build it in the right place, we're gonna generate a lot of basically free energy. The disadvantages are that it's not dependable, it only works if there's wind, it has low power output, each turbine does not produce very much power. They can also be noisy and some people do not like how they look and they can't be built too close to large cities, they need open space for wind. And that's a problem because large cities demand a lot more electricity than other parts of the country. And they also cost a lot to maintain and they can be damaged in high wind. I'm going to explain a moderately complicated equation for the power that results from a wind turbine. And to do that, I'm going to have to imagine that a tube of air, a cylinder of air, is impacting the turbine. So this turbine has a circular surface area that it turns around. So any wind going through that circular surface area ideally would contribute to the spinning of the wind turbine. You'll notice when looking at the circle that the radius of the circle is exactly equal to the length of one turbine blade. That's going to be really important for problem solving. We'll see why in just a minute, but just remember that the radius is one turbine blade long. We can imagine a cylinder of air impacting this circle. And that cylinder is going to have the same radius as the wind turbine itself. We're imagining exactly that size of air hits it because any air outside of that circle doesn't really affect the wind turbine at all. So we only need to focus on this cylindrical area. And I'm going to imagine that this cylinder has a kinetic energy of 100. Like the total air inside of that cylinder, if you add up all its mass and all its velocity, has a total kinetic energy of 100 joules. If it passes through the wind turbine to the other side, and we find that after it's moving a little slower, so it has a kinetic energy of 60 joules, that means that 40 joules of energy must have been captured by the wind turbine. So if we can find a way to find the total energy before and the total energy after of air going through a wind turbine, whatever difference exists has to have been captured by the wind turbine itself. So here the wind turbine captured 40 joules of kinetic energy. So how can we find how much kinetic energy the cylinder has? Well, I know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And to find the mass of air in a given volume, we need the density of air, the mass per volume. This is going to tell me how much mass we have if we have a certain volume. This is the symbol rho. This is the symbol for density used in physics. It's a Greek letter. And it's equal to mass divided by volume, or m over v. So rho is equal to m over v. As a quick example of using this equation, we can imagine a box of air that's 16.8 kilograms, and it has sides of 2 meters, 2 meters, and 3 meters like this. So to figure out its density, I would take its mass, which is 16.8 kilograms. Solving for the volume gets me 2 times 2 times 3 meters, which is 12 meters cubed. So the density rho, m over v, is equal to 16.8 kilograms over 12 meters cubed, which is equal to 1.4 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's how you use the density equation, and that's going to be very important for calculating the kinetic energy of air. So using density, we're going to combine that with the kinetic energy formula. I can see that rearranging this gets me the volume times the density is equal to the mass of the object. And I know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to its length times the area of the base of one of the circles. So I'm going to call this length L. I'm just going to leave that as L for now. And I'm going to call this the area, the area of that circle. So the volume is going to equal L times A. So therefore, I know that the volume times the density is equal to the mass. So I can replace mass in the kinetic energy equation with the length times the area times the density. Okay, we're going to get there. I'm now going to look at what's happening when this air is moving through the wind turbine. 
So as it moves through, it takes a certain amount of time to move through. And in that time, it covers exactly one length of the cylinder of distance. It's going from one side of the length to the other like this. So you can see in its full movement through the turbine, it covers exactly one full length of that cylinder of air. I'm going to call T the total time the cylinder of air passes through the turbine. And I'm going to call L the total displacement the cylinder travels in that time. You can see it's traveling that far in that time. So therefore, the velocity of this cylinder is equal to the distance it covers divided by the time, which in this case is equal to its length divided by the total time it takes to move through the wind turbine. Rearranging, I get T times the velocity is equal to L. So I can replace L in that equation with T times velocity. Solving that out gets me the kinetic energy is one half times the time that the air takes to go through times the surface area of the wind turbine times the density of the air times the velocity of the air cubed. So we're almost done because we don't really have a clear way of dealing with that time. Like we can't actually measure cylinders of air. So we actually don't really use kinetic energy in these equations. We're going to be using power instead because power allows me to divide the kinetic energy by the time. Power is the change in energy over time. So if I divide the kinetic energy by the total time the cylinder of air is taking to go through the turbine, I get a power output of the turbine of one half times the area of the turbine times the density of air times the velocity of the air cubed. You'll notice that this no longer depends on the specific properties of the cylinder of air. It only depends on the air itself, the air around the turbine, its velocity, and the area of the turbine itself. So that's useful and that's going to help us figure out the power output of wind turbines. This equation tells you the power carried by wind. The power is one half times the area of the area that you're looking at, in this case the wind turbine, times the density of air times the velocity of the air cubed. This is the way that it's given in your IB test booklet. You will be expected to know that the area A is equal to pi times the radius, which in this case is the length of the turbine blade. So here's an example problem. Air with density 1.4 kilograms per meter cubed enters a turbine with 20 meter blades at a velocity of 12 meters per second. When the air comes out of the turbine on the other side, it has a density of 1.8 kilograms per meters cubed and a velocity of seven meters per second. How much power is extracted from the air by the turbine? So this is what's given. I know that the area of the turbine using that equation is equal to 1,257 meters squared. The density before is 1.4, after is 1.8, the velocity before is 12, and the velocity after is seven. I'm gonna use this to figure out the power before the air goes through the turbine and the power after it goes through the turbine. And the differences between those two powers, like if it drops from 10 watts to six watts, that means that the turbine is capturing four watts of air power. So the power before is this equation, plugging in those numbers gets me 1.52 megawatts. And the power after, plugging in those numbers, gets me 0.39 megawatts. So the power before minus the power after is 1.13 megawatts. That's how much wattage was lost from the air, which means it's how much was gained by the wind turbine. So that's how you figure out how much power is being extracted from the air by the turbine. Here's example two, if you triple the velocity of wind, how much does the power delivered by the wind increase? So I'm gonna use some proportional reasoning here. I'm going to say that the original power is one half A rho V cubed. And the new power is that same thing, but it's gonna be three V all cubed. Solving that out, three cubed is 27. So I'm just going to bring 27 to one side here and show that this is 27 times the original power. So this shows that the power carried by wind that's moving three times as fast is actually 27 times as great as the original wind. This shows why it's really, really important to build wind turbines in places with consistent high wind, because even if you're only missing a few meters per second, that's going to very drastically change how much wind power you can capture. So that's why wind turbines are very frequently built on oceans and very rarely built in cities. It just makes a lot more sense to build them where they're going to capture the most power because any additional velocity to wind is going to add a lot more power to to the turbine. Here's example number three. Wind of density 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed and velocity of six meters per second impacts a 25% efficient turbine with 10 meter blades. How much power does the turbine generate? So let's figure this out. I'm going to find the power delivered by the wind. Solving for that gets me 40,700 watts. And I know that the efficiency times that power in will equal the power out, which here when I calculate it is 8,140 watts. So that's how much power the turbine generates. And that's what you need to know about wind turbines and calculating their power.